Love is the key. Love is the key to be trusted with heaven's blessings or heaven's best. How many want heaven's best? I know you do. I do too. Well, let's read this together in Deuteronomy 8 and uh, 10 through 14, 17 through 18. It says, when you have eaten and you are satisfied, you are to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. How many know we, how many know we have praise in our, our mouth? We have praise in our heart. Amen. And it says, beware that you do not forget the Lord, your God, by not keeping his commandments. And it goes on to say statutes, ordinance. But in the Old Testament, you had thousands of statutes, ordinance, and commandments. But in the New Testament, you just have two. Okay? So we're going to break that down today. Lest when you have eaten and you're full, and you built these beautiful houses. Say that with me. I have built beautiful houses. How many believe God's going to give you a beautiful home? Yeah, I, I've met people that have beautiful homes, but they don't have a beautiful home. The house is beautiful, but inside is hell. But how many know God can give you heaven in the house, and the house can be a beautiful home too? Clap like you know God's a good God. He's the goodness of God. That's his goodness. And that's the, so if you're believing God for a house, there it is right there. If you want more than one house, it's right there. If you want a nice house, it's all there. If you're building a house, there it is. And dwell in them. And then when your herds and your flocks multiply, so for us, freedom, that would be campuses, churches, and, and small groups. How many leaders are multiplying? How many leaders are multiplying? Mm -hmm. uh, we just launched another 60, 70 leaders, so we're, 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 we're going to break 600 small groups uh, shortly here, which is a real blessing, because that tells us 4,000 people are being taken care of. One girl, when I, I was standing outside today, uh, I don't always get to because of energy, but I was standing out there shaking people's hand. She says, I haven't, I, I've, been, I, I've been here a year. I've never met you. And I said, okay. And I said, do you go to a group? She says, yes. And then she started crying, and she's like thanking God for her leader. But that's, that's saying that, 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 that I'm doing a good job because I, there's no way I could pastor five to 7,000 people. But if I can raise pastors and leaders that can take care of the people, everybody will have their need met. Clap like you love small groups. Clap like you love family group. Come on. How many go to a... Watch me. Watch me. Raise your hand if you go to a family group. That's 90%. That's 100%. 90%. Let me try it again. If you go to a family group or you're a family group leader, raise your hand. No, no. Keep your hand up. If your neighbor doesn't have their hand up, get them in your group. Okay. That was a little plug. Okay, now. But how many believe that our campuses and our groups are going to multiply and they are multiplying how many believe we'll have a campus in Inglewood, Long Beach Orange, come on now how many believe we'll have it in San Bernardino, Covina El Monte, East Los Angeles clap like you believe we're going to go and we're going to spread all over the world and when your herds and your flocks multiply, then here's the danger, no no, no I'm sorry and then say your silver Come on, your silver and your gold are multiplied. How many would like what you have right now to multiply? How many would like your stock to multiply? Some of you are like, stock? How many would like your investments to multiply? How many would like what's in your bank account to multiply? How many would like a raise or two raises or three? How many would like a new job, a better job, making more money? There it is. There's your, there's your new job right there. And the Bible said your gold and your silver are multiplied. And then it goes on to say, and all that you have is multiplied. And we are freedom. I keep seeing babies everywhere. You guys are really taking this literally, aren't you? There's like an anointing, like a baby machine church. I'm pregnant again. I'm pregnant. Wow, this is a blessed church right here, boy. We took the scripture and we believe God. When your heart, this is the danger, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of bondage, then you say in your heart, well, you know, I know I got all this blessing and I got all this stuff in my life, but... You know, it was my power. 
and it was the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Danger, danger, stranger danger, come on now. <laughs> danger, you're tripping. Because one preacher was preaching the other day and it really touched me. He said, I've always been a good communicator since I was little, like the life party and all that. So I've always thought it was my gift. And it is a gift that he has. But he says one time God lifted that grace from him and, and behind the pulpit. And for like almost a, a week, he couldn't even put a message together. And he cried out to God and he said, I'm so sorry, Lord. I always thought it was me and my gift and my talent. But God said, remember, I gave you your talent. I gave you your gift. I gave it to you. And then it goes on, the scripture goes on to say, I want you to read this with me because I want you to get a hold of this. Say it out loud. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is my God. who He's the one who gives me power. He gives you power. Ability. No, no, I'm talking now. Okay, ability. Resource, opportunity, strength, wisdom, guidance. He gives power to get wealth. He does. And the level of power he, he's going to hit you with will determine if you remember him and obey his commands. Powerful. God will hit you like a lightning bolt of power for wealth if he can trust your heart. How many, how many believe God wants to turn up the power dial? Let, let me say this. Because, because, because if God turns up the power dial... You got to be ready for it. And God has me preaching this because he wants you to believe and he wants you to align your life because heaven is ready to turn up the power dial. Because 2023 will be a year of prosperity and miracles. Clap like you're ready for God to turn up the power. The key to remembering God is the commandments. And in the New Testament, we don't have 10 commandments. We don't have 20 commandments. We don't have a 1,000 commandments. We have two commandments. Anybody know what they are? Well, it's right there in your notes. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, 31. Read out loud with me. Say, first commandment. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. And love the Lord your God with all your strength. That's the first commandment. The second commandment is, and your neighbor is here, love your neighbor, your wife, your husband, your children, your boss, Your enemy. Because when you get power, you can kill your enemy. But will you be a merciful king? Love your neighbor. Didn't say trust them. Didn't say give them the keys to your house. But you got to love them as you love yourself. And there is no greater commandment than these two. So if you do these two, you remember the Lord and get ready for the power to be turned up. Clap like love is the key to heaven's blessing. All right, let's go deeper. Ready to go deep? Wait a minute, 12 minutes, what just happened? I'm taking 20 minutes, that's it. You, got, you must have took my announcements or something. Don't count my, my announcements, I'm barely preaching. It couldn't have took 15, 17 minutes. You must have counted my, my announcements. Don't count my announcements. Because it says I have 10 minutes. Somebody's tripping back there, I gotta talk to somebody. 
Number two, you ready? Okay, love the Lord. If we're going to remember God, we're going to obey his command, we have to first love the Lord with all the heart. Love is at the heart of the matter. The heart is the home of the affections, and the heart is the seat of the human will. If God has your heart, he has your affection, and if he has your affection, he has your will. How does that feel? What does that look like? It's very simple. The moment I met Liz, the moment I met her, she had my affection. She had my heart. I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, do, 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 do. And my will followed my affection. Because wherever your affection is, that's where your will will go. And if your affection is with God, then whatever direction he asks of you, you'll go in that direction. But if God doesn't have your affection, then God will not have your will. And if he doesn't have your will, then you cannot be trusted with great power for wealth. Because you'll spend it on your own pleasure, and you'll spend it on your own agenda, and you'll spend it on your own thing, and if you're not careful, it will kill you early. But if God has your affection, that means he has your will, and you can handle the weight of the blessing of the power of wealth. Shout like you're ready for that kind of blessing. Turn it up, Jesus. 3 John 2 says, I pray in all these areas that you prosper. And, you're, and, you, and you be in good health just as the heart prospers. So what the writer is saying is your life will go in the direction of your heart. I'll say it again. Your life, my life, our life will go in the direction of our heart. The wisest man that ever lived on the planet called Earth other than Christ, his name was Solomon. And God had given him a grace of wisdom. He was wiser than any king that had ever lived. He was wiser than any man that had ever lived, and he was the wealthiest man that has ever existed in, in, human, in human history. It was nothing like Solomon. In Solomon's day, he was so wise, and he generated so much prosperity that silver was like dirt. So this guy has something to say to us, would you say? Sometimes we don't, we, we'll, we'll honor the word of an Elon Musk more than a Solomon. Elon Musk could not buy Solomon's throne. <laughs> well, he probably could have, but that's about it. Come on up, because he's very wealthy, but not like Solomon. Solomon was beyond the trillion flow. Solomon was beyond, beyond, beyond. And Solomon says this to us today from the grave. Wisdom speaks, and Solomon says, above all else, above all else, when you said I do to that wife, you said you are above all else. Keep it that way. As far as staying faithful. You there? <laughs> Say, above all else, guard, protect. It literally means put soldiers, an army of soldiers around your heart. Why? Why? Because Solomon said, everything will flow from what's in that heart. Think about, that's a heavy statement. Think about that whatever is in that heart is what's going to show up in that person's life. That's why Jesus says, like all these things that, 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 that men sin, he said, don't blame God or don't blame the devil. That was in your heart. And because that was in your heart, it manifested in your life. Now, when I watch people, like I watch people, and I say, okay, as a pastor for 20 years, ministry for 30, I've watched people that are constantly going from one dramatic situation to another dramatic situation and they could it seems like they could never get ahead in life and I've realized I know exactly why because they don't have their future that God wants in their heart and they haven't bent their will to God's agenda they still refuse to obey God 
in their heart. Therefore, God can't trust them, and they're always creating drama. Baby mama drama. Come on now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it could be, right? Like, for instance, you have somebody, they say, man, why do I always have, like, one bad relationship after another? Some of you got to, it's, it's been so bad, you just quit. But if it's, like, a lot of the same kind of people, then it's not the same kind of people, the problem. The problem is you have that in your heart. You ever seen somebody that's, like, really attractive, and then they're with somebody that's not very attractive, and you're trying to figure out how that happened? Well, that's what they see themselves as. That's what's in their heart. So you attract what's in your heart. You become what's in your heart. Your life will go in the direction of what's in the heart. That's why the Bible said, love God with all your affection. So let us keep our hearts open. Let us keep our hearts pliable to God's plans and God's directions. I don't want to go too much deeper in this, but listen, I'm going to say it this way. God has plans for every area of your life. God has directions for every area of our lives. The question is, are we willing to yield to that? And it starts with giving God your heart for reals. And I understand it's kind of, in the beginning, it's hard. Like when God wanted my whole heart, he didn't get it right away. It took some time. Because... Because, you know, I was like that scared, abused child. You know, my dad that was supposed to raise me, left me, abandoned me. And then my stepdad abused me every day. And I, and, I, and I went through hell growing up. So I had real trust issues. Like I had, you know, trust no man issues. Some of you have it tattooed on you. But you, 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 you that trust no man, it, it, it's translated, and I'm not going to trust God either. I'm trusting nobody. And that's not a way to live. But because of my trust issues and because of my abuse, when it, it came to start trusting God, it took time for me to build that relationship. It was like little by little. I could trust him and I could trust him and I could trust him. Now I can trust him with my entire life. And the more I can trust him, watch me, let's God know, then I have your affection and I have your will. Now I could turn the power up because I know you're not going to waste the wealth. You're going to use it for my glory. Somebody shout like God can give you power to get wealth. This, this, what I'm teaching right now is how to prosper God's way. Really, it is. And then can I go deeper? You good? Okay, I'm going to go deeper. Hebrews 12, 15 says, see to it, see to it, that no one fall short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble. And not only does it cause trouble in your life, but it defiles everything around you. So we must protect the heart against bitterness because it will affect our love for God and it will affect our relationships. So it's very important that you learn how to develop in your life an attitude of, I don't care what you do to me. I don't care what you say about me. I may get mad. I may get peed off. Come on. But I'm not going to go to bed like that because I'm not going to let you rob my heart from my prosperity. I'm not going to let you rob me from my future. So I'm going to protect my heart. And it's not easy. I'll tell you the truth. It's not easy. Sometimes people make comments on my Instagram because we're kind of blowing up now. Come on, viral and all that stuff. So they started making, they, wanted, they ain't got no platform, so they want to use your platform. And I say, get rid of that stuff. But then you got to be careful because that stuff will try to get in your heart. I don't even like to read it. I don't like to read it. I don't want to care. I don't care what haters say. They're haters. They're not in my life for a reason. But why? Because I don't want to let their bitterness get inside of me. And don't be that person that posts comments that are dumb and spread your bitterness on other people like puking everybody. No one cares about your opinion. Create your own platform, get your own opinion, and let's see if anybody really will listen. <laughs> hey, hey. It's powerful. So we're not going to go there. 
No. The society we live in, everybody's bitter. Everybody's blaming everybody. The reason I can't come up is because of you. And the reason I'm held back is because of you. Let me help you. Nobody has the power to hold you back. I feel like preaching. No, I say it. Nobody has the power to hold you back but you. But as long as you want to play a victim, you want to play your victim card everywhere, then you're going to stay stuck in your victimization. Listen, I'm not, I'm not questioning the fact that you were victimized, but I'm going to tell you, you are no longer a victim. You are victorious. And if you allow God, come on, to get in the, in the corazón, in the depth of your heart, watch God take you from the pit right up to the palace, baby. Shout like God can turn up the power. So it's not easy. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, just, you know, love. Love. Because sometimes love is rebuke. Sometimes love is getting the ch chancla out. Come on now. Amen. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. Can I move on because of time? Looks like they gave me like another 30 seconds. Okay, now. I'm giving them a hard time. I know the guys, okay. Number three, love the Lord. Say, love the Lord, love the Lord. with all your soul. And that's, you could define that as lifestyle. And then love the Lord with all your mind. I put them together because they really go together. Because whoever has the mind will also have the lifestyle. That's why the, the battle is for the mind. Listen to what Paul said. This is one of my favorite scriptures, by the way, when I first got saved. This is a very, very crucial scripture for your future. I urge you, or it literally means I beg you, I, I'm pleading with you, in view or in light of God's mercies on your life, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's a lifestyle. And so get your body that's alive and sacrifice it. Not really. Don't sacrifice it. And he says, well, how do I do it? Well, by living holy, pure. Because your body, I'll tell you right now, is not always going to want to be holy. Like if you used to like party, hey, hey, and you got saved, you're like, man, I don't want to party no more. You're probably lying. Now, your spirit, no, your spirit like, Harabashanda, Shadabada Honda, come on. But your body, my mind's telling me no, come on now. But my body, hey. So, so you got to take this body and you got you to gotta check them. Like, oh no, you're going to pray today. Like my body sometimes Monday morning don't want to pray. I don't want to sit there and watch. I want to watch YouTube. Come on, somebody. I want to watch sports. But my, I got to tell my body, you, go, you, you be quiet. You go pray. You need to spend time with God. And I'll pray for 30, 40 minutes feel nothing. I don't care. You're going to sit right here, and you're going to worship God, and you're going to praise God. You're going to thank God because you ain't in charge. I'm in charge. Somebody ought to shout like we're going to present our body as a living sacrifice. So we're going to love the Lord with our lifestyle. And it's going to sacrifice ourselves. It's not always fun. It's not always goosebumps. Not always going to have the keyboard and the organ and the tracks and the drummer and the dancers. Uh, uh, uh. Come on. <laughs> and when you don't feel all that, this is where God, you got to train yourself to give God your mind. Because if God has your mind, he's going to have your lifestyle. And you're going to begin to develop what we like to call a lifestyle of freedom. It's not a moment of freedom. That's another thing. People want that freedom. Like right now on Instagram, there's a lot of teaching on demons, like casting demons out of everybody. Christians casting demons out of everybody. Come out, you demon. And I'm, I'm not against that. We do that here every Sunday night. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know, you come here, lifestyle of freedom, you know, come in here, a little weird, you know what I mean? And when we turn the lights off, you're like, what's going on? Next thing you know, you're getting prayed for. And next thing you're on the ground. Bleh! Come on. 
So we're not against it. But I don't give it a, like, I don't make it a big deal. I just say, turn the music up. Put the lights down so no one sees. And then the lights go back on and your eyelashes this way. It's, one of them's on the altar. You're like, what happened? Oh, well, girl, you got delivered. Come on, somebody. You got free, man. That's all good. Say it's all good. But that's easy. All you got to do is come, open your heart, and then shakata, and then boom. Ah! But now, you, 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 the, real freedom, the real freedom begins now. Because now we got to recreate mentalities that put you in bondage in the first place. So we got to tear out old thinking and we got to rebuild your mind, stronghold. Now that's work. A lot of people, you know, they, they come lifestyle of freedom for a few weeks and they get touched and power got hit them. And they're like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, you're not good. You went through the, the freedom part, but now you got to go through the lifestyle of freedom part. We got to get your mind right. We got to get you to learn how to meditate in the word day and night to rebuild and to reframe your thinking because the demon trained you how to think. Now we need God to train. Come on, to rewire your mind. This is your true and proper worship. I want you to say it out loud. Say, do not conform to the pattern, to the pattern of this world. So I mean, oh, this world has a pattern for you. Man, I wish I had more time. Come on. This world has a pattern. Every one of you have, have a pattern of thinking that's not biblical. And that pattern must be challenged. That pattern must be faced. That pattern has to be faced. And you have to get the light of the word and say, is that what God says about me? Is that what God says I am? And you got to go into warfare. And you got to replace those old patterns with new patterns of blessing and destiny and future and purpose and assignment and heaven's dream for you and your family. Because I still believe that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Give God a shout like you believe it's true. It's powerful. So the devil's a con artist. Do not conform. Con, con, artist, con, con. Do not conform. Mold, pattern, conform. The enemy told me, this is who you are. This is what you're going to be. This is how, how far you can go in life. And I had to face that giant. You, you'll, you'll never have an education. You'll never be successful. You'll never be married. You'll never have a family. You'll never have great destiny. You'll never touch the nation. Blah, blah, whoop, 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 whoop. You're a filthy liar and the devil is under my feet. I am what God said I am. I can do what God said I can do and I will be what God said I can be. Somebody shout like you're gonna break the pattern. Somebody in your life, in your family has to break that pattern. Shout like you're a curse breaker. Nobody in our family ever lived there. Nobody in our family ever did that. No, no, no. Well, that's, listen, who's your family now? Who is your brother? Who is your sister? Jesus' mother showed up in his house one day. And they said, Jesus, your mama's here, and your brother's here, and your, all, your, all your Theo and your aunts and uncle are here. He said, who is my brother? And they looked at him like he done lost his entire mind. They said, what are you talking about? Your mama's out there, fool. He's like, who is my mama? Mary is your mama. He said, who is my mama? Mary's your mama, fool. No, no, no. Who is my mama? Who is my daddy? Who is my brother? And they said, well, then who? He said, whoever does God's will, because I'm not going to let my family line block me. I'm not going to let my skin color block me. I'm not going to, come on, I'm not going to let my past block me. I'm not going to let where I come from block me. The devil is a liar. Don't you let nobody block you. Don't you let nobody stop you. For my Bible said that if God is for you, who can be? We got to break that pattern. Please stand on your feet.
Because if I don't close, we're going to be here a long time. To be transformed. Transformer, come on. I'm more than meets the eye. How am I going to be transformed? People say, you can't change. They just tell us this. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. I used to believe that. I don't believe it anymore. Now, don't be dumb. I'm not anymore. And then you go back with your friends and you're in the trap house again. I'm just here to reach them. You ain't going to reach them. They're going to get you, take you out. You got to be smart. You got to be wise. You got to test yourself. But no, I'm no longer what you say I am. I've been transformed, metamorphosized, turned into a completely different person. Therefore, it's changed my lifestyle. When I got saved, people tripped out in the city of Whittier. People literally came here, here, there's some of them right now, here, came here to rob me. Don't ever try to rob us here. They have guns. They'll shoot you. <laughs> Just got to tell people here, they're fools, you know what I mean? Hey, whatever, all right. You came to the wrong church, homie. Come on. <laughs> it's like Texas. You don't miss with nobody. They all have guns, man. Grandmas have guns over there. Now watch. So when I got saved, they came to the Freedom City Church to rob me because they determined in their mind, people, man, hmm, people like Jason Lozano don't become preachers. It's a front. He's selling dope out of there. And when they came, I could not convince them otherwise. So I just said, why don't you just sit in the service and at the end I'll take care of you. Meaning in their mind, oh, okay, we'll get the drugs. This happened, y'all. One of the guys is here right now, the leader, with this gun, ready to rob me. Started preaching, he realized quickly, this is real. And he ran out the building. The girl, she couldn't leave because she was in the front row. And I zeroed in on the power I got. It. I, I, she, she's like, what's happening? And then service was over, and at the end, she like snapped out of it. She's like, okay, you gonna take care of me? I said, sure, let's go. Went to the back, and I smashed her in the power of God. She started throwing up, demons started coming out. The power of God hit her. I said, now you got what you came for? Come on, somebody. I gotta help, you gotta help me. But let me tell you what this is, why this is powerful because I had a pattern and I had to break it. I've had many patterns in my life that were not of God. My stepfather patterned me. Mm. Teachers patterned me. Society patterned me. But God had a pattern for me. For the Bible said, I know the plans, the pattern I have for you. Plans to give you a hope. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a future. And I had to be willing to pay the price. And there is a price to transform your mind. Everybody wants your mind. Because they know if they got your mind, they got your money. Advertising companies spend trillions on advertising to get a hold of your mind so you could buy their product. The world knows this works. So does God and so does the devil. And that's why the devil will try to solicit our mind any way he can. Don't let that phone you have solicit you into an old pattern. Let that phone be a blessing and put the word on it and let it build, your, let it build you up in your most holy faith. Come on, clap like you're going to get the pattern of God for your life. I don't have time. We'll, go, we'll deal with more next week because I got to close. But here's, here's something powerful. I had to fight through it to become that. This was 20 years, 19 years ago. To get to that point in my life, I had to go to Bible college. And I had to fight the pattern. That you're stupid and you can't read. I had to fight the pattern when I couldn't talk right. That you'll never talk right again. I had to fight the pattern after pattern. And I had to fight the devil in my own mind. 
and go to battle with them. Learn how to meditate in that word day and night and battle through and battle through and battle through to I got to the point then I was comfortable in classes. Finally finished my AA, got my BA, went on to do my master's in psychology. And I was in that class and the devil would tell me, what are you doing here? You try to, you're stupid, you don't belong here. And I laughed out loud, ha, ha, ha. You should have, you should have, you, sh- you know you, they're not going to work anymore. I already broke that pattern. I belong here. Come on. Some of you have to break the pattern that you can never buy your own property. Some of you have to break the pattern that all the stuff you did in your past is going to ruin your life. You got to break the pattern that your children will be bound forever. You got to break the pattern that you're going to be bound forever. I've come with an anointing this morning to tell somebody God's power is here to break that pattern of addiction, that pattern of poverty, that pattern of failure. I need you to throw your hands up and cry out to God and say, Father, I receive your pattern. I receive your plan somebody worship God I gotta close let's worship come on my early walk with God why the devil why you fought me so hard I just seemed like this little drug addict guy why would you fight me like that because sometimes the devil knows more than you know about you come on he sees in the spirit big old angels that have been with you all your life yeah I should have died on the 605 when I split my face open but a God's angel protected me And that devil knew these angels are not normal angels. And he tried to kill me when I first got saved. And he battled me. And he battled me. And he battled me. Why am I saying this? Because there's somebody here. You're you're confused. I don't have anything. Why am I under an attack so much? It's not what you are right now. It's where you're headed, baby. It's what you're about to become. It's what you're going to do for God. I, I feel this today. Some of you need to boldly just shout and worship God. And I'm going to give you a word. The devil should have killed you when he had a sh- when he had a chance. But it's too late now. It's too late now. It's too late now. He didn't give us a spirit of fear I'm hearing a song on the spirit somebody pick it up I am a child yeah. of God That's it. listen somebody's gonna get delivered of demons this morning that little devil we're gonna flick him off you he ain't never coming back I don't, I don't know what you've done or where you've been, but I serve the God of mercy and the God of grace. Listen to me. I'm gonna, we're going to worship. All these people that we're touching in this room all over the world, they were on the other end of my love for God. It was on the other end of your love for God. I know you might be scared. You know you're, you're having a hard time trusting. I feel your, I get you. But don't, don't back off. Press into God. Press in with everything you have. Shake off the grave clothes of your past. Shake off the intimidation of men. Shake off the fear of man and say, God, I'm going after you with everything I have. And I'm telling you right now, 
If you do, God is going to use you in an amazing, powerful way. And all of a sudden, your life is going to begin to make sense. No wonder why the devil tried to kill me when I was young. Let me tell you, he tried to kill Jesus when he was a baby. He tried to kill Moses when he was a baby. He tried to kill Paul when he was born again. But the devil did not succeed. God's going to raise you if you let him. God's going to bless you if you let him.